Good evening. Welcome everybody to the stream this evening. Nice to see everybody. And for once, thanks to my lovely, beautiful wife, I've got the right glasses on. So I don't have to change them. So first thing to do tonight is to focus this camera. Um, when I can find my mouse, there we go. Then, like that. So all I'm going to do is we're, we're going to carry on working on this chain that we started last night. Candy cane, uh, which is a, it's a quite a pretty, uh, well it will be quite a pretty bracelet. So I'm going to turn it into a bracelet, but um, I need to get some more rings out, <laughs> he says, thinking uh, rather quickly as to what it was he was trying to say. So I'm going to get uh, three lots of colours out. We're using pink, sky blue and gold. And then uh, we'll carry on with this. I just put that to one side. So here's loads of uh, ring colours, by the way. Just uh, I'll tell you about some of them. I'll tell you about all of them, really. We have silver in this container here. White. Sea foam, which is kind of a mint colour. Yellow, which is quite a vibrant yellow. Um show up quite as well on the camera. Sky blue. This is a rich purple. I know it looks blue but it's quite a rich purple. It's a really hard to, uh, colour to capture even with the stills camera is that. Um, orange. Lavender or light purple and that often is quite variable as to how light it is. So that's a lighter version of that I know it looks blue, but it's a light purple, lavender colour. Then we have <coughs> a colour called Champagne, which is sort of a brownie colour. Gold, and I know that looks a little brown. <laughs> it's the lighting in here, I'm sure. But that's that's a sort of 18 carat, 22 carat gold sort of colour. Pink. Now this, this is blue, that's royal blue, green, red, bronze, what they call black ice or gunmetal, and black. So 15 colours, although there is a 16th available called rose pink, which is sort of halfway between red and, and pink, um, halfway between there and there, uh, is available in some ring sizes. But for the meantime, let me get out some of these ring sizes that I'm rings that I'm actually using. So, no idea how many I want. So I'm just need a f I was about to say a handful, but I'm not filling my hands with them. So I just create three piles on the desk of a number. Could almost do with a little tiny spoon with these. Uh, uh, these particular um, containers just to sort of get in there and, and scoop things out quite, quite often you end up just getting one or two out uh, let's get a few more blow out there we go <coughs> now you get to see the vastly exciting bit of opening rings <laughs> we put them to one side so they're out the way and I'm going to do it using this this tool you're the best person hi hi and thank you very much for telling me that i thought i already knew that but you know what never mind <coughs> so the exciting bit um is just going to be getting hold of rings this is this will take a few minutes to do uh, and it's just opening Opening the gap in the rings to be big enough to pass other rings through and then uh, once I've done that for all three colours that we're using we'll start with weaving some more of the bracelet. So this is kind of a necessary part of all the uh, uh, ring work. You kind of can't avoid it really. And I can either sit down and uh, 
do it off stream or do it when I sort of uh, receive them or I can do it on stream and since one of the uh, one of the ideas of the streaming <coughs> is to give people an indication of just how long it takes to do some of these things because quite often people who may have seen things like this will see people who have prepared things in advance you know got all the rings out counted them and things like that or if they're on YouTube you might be looking at things done in um, time lapse in which case gives a completely sort of unrealistic view of how long these things take so that's one of the ideas for uh, for doing the streaming Fear Reaper 7 good evening welcome to the studio this evening fluffy 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 twiglet and for some reason when you get the W in there the twiglet becomes hard to say but good evening welcome back to the studio this evening Yep, oh, says it. Nope, that ring went somewhere on the floor. Can I see it? No, I can't. It'll turn up at some point. Oh, it's there. <laughs> I don't like to waste them by just letting them go on the floor. But uh, that's what happens sometimes. It's surprisingly difficult to see rings, even brightly coloured ones or brightly sparkling ones. <coughs> they seem to be able to hide even on a green carpet. that one up a bit more yeah, I'll do that for the moment in blue so we've got some blue ones ready there <coughs> let's get roughly about the same number of pink don't exactly know how many I need for this to finish this off but we shall see yes my mic is working suddenly thought then Couldn't do that again if I tried. <clears throat> I bounced a ring and it uh, it landed on my finger. This is weaving <coughs> this is weaving three lots of colours together. I'm guessing at well I could use lots more than three colours. I'm using three colours because that's the uh, the number of colours that the uh, diagram that I'm fo I was following um, uses and therefore it made it easier to follow the diagram. This is somewhat of a chaotic looking um, weave but is uh, is also quite a quite a nice one to look at and I am not getting hold of that ring properly um, kind of got to get hold of these to use this um, ring could I get hold of them fairly robustly shall we say so that you don't slide sideways for some reason it seems to take a little bit more well I suppose no, I was going to say it takes a bit more effort than um, using two lots of pliers, but uh, there's no particular reason why it should. Right. almost got all the pink I've got out um, opened and then we'll open the final uh, gold ones and then we will start I think I'm using them in the same order I was last night which will be a good thing 
Although, quite frankly, I'm not altogether sure with this weave if I got it wrong, whether or not I'd notice. <coughs> For those of you who haven't seen uh, what candy cane weave looks like, I shall show you in just a moment when I've uh, finished opening these gold rings. So once we, <coughs> hopefully we'll finish it fairly, well fairly shortly, that probably means about an hour. And then I'm going to do, uh, almost certainly try the same weave again, but in a larger ring size. Just to see what it looks like in, in a different ring size and with different colours as well. We'll try more sort of Christmassy looking colours, reds, greens, purple. <coughs> Right, um, we're getting that. For those that don't know that are watching, good evening. And uh, of course, uh, if you are watching and not following, I'm going to encourage you to um, to push the follow button. But that's up to you, of course. And uh, whilst I'm just opening these, I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, this. These are aluminium rings, so the wire is aluminium wire. Um, yeah, 19 gauge. I was, I was actually looking, I couldn't remember. Uh, 19 gauge wire, um, that's probably UK standard wire gauge. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Um, but they're, um, let's open. They, uh, the wire is, is about a millimetre in diameter. And then uh, once it once the the, well, the wire has been formed, it's it's been anodized uh, with uh, the various colours, and they uh, they then are really shiny, almost saturated colours, but they're, they're quite a pretty colours. What I'll then be doing is uh, forming these rings together. That technically gets called chain mail, but. Um, that's, that's kind of a generic term for the weaving of rings together. Um, of course, historically, the only purpose for doing that was creating uh, armour. Um, but that's not something that I do. So I use it just purely for uh, decorative, i.e. Uh, jewellery purposes. Right. I've got less blue rings out than I thought I had. Never mind. We'll deal with that when we get to it. <coughs> Three more and then we will be weaving. Okay. Now then, candy cane. This is called candy cane. Let me focus on that a little bit. Now that we move up, there we go. I'll be working at about that sort of distance, so that's candy cane. It's supposed to have a twisty sort of um, design. Provided it's done uh, done correctly, and whether it's been done correctly or not, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> it looks correct, but we shall see. <laughs> Quite some colours, yeah. Just three there. There's the um, the gold, the pink, and the blue. It does, doesn't it? It actually isn't as complicated as it looks. Well, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's um, it, it's a relatively simple weave once you've got the hang of it. Until you get the hang of it, though. <clears throat> it does look rather complicated. Now then, so I'm, the last rings I used were blue, and I know I was going blue, gold, pink. And I can sort of see that uh, from, the, from the way I've been doing it there. So my next one is gold. 
Now this is about, <coughs> excuse me, this is about the most complicated bit of it because what I've got to do is feed this gold ring through the blue, there, through the pink, through the last lot of gold, and then pick up the final blue on the other side. And that's kind of it. No, that's okay. Um, and then, then I make sure I'm on on frame, and then I just close up the close up the ring like that. Then I <coughs> basically just turn this around and do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to move these rings out of the way because otherwise the tail of this which is bushing on the desk will uh, will send them all over the place so I just use gold so I'm using gold this is all done in pairs quite often with uh, with this with any sort of ring weaving you're usually doing rings in often in pairs especially with these tubular style ones uh, um, they sort of you use two rings opposite each other often in a lot of weaves, whether it's Byzantine box, um, this, uh, which is uh, candy cane or, or, or others, um, there's a few where you just use a single one or variations, I suppose, where you use three, but uh, quite often in, in the complex patterns, they're usually, they're usually often doubled up. Right. So I effectively just did exactly the same thing as I did before, picking up the rings. Um, technically this gets called, also gets called a 6 in 1 weave because there are 6 rings going through every ring. So every single ring in this chain has 6 other rings going through it. Um, now then, the next bit I've got to do is, and I've done it, is hold this the right way. Because to get the twist in the right direction, I then have to put the next ring in the right side. Uh, this is kind of like a square. Okay, so I've kind of got a square. And so this ring could go in any of the four corners, and literally it does go like across a corner. But to get the weave or to get the twist in the right direction, it's going to go in the right corner, the correct corner. <laughs> it does happen to be. Yeah. Uh, and so you have to hold it in, in a certain direction, which is that way. And then I can put the ring through this, what's to me is the bottom right quadrant or the bottom right corner. So I pick up two rings, just simply like that. And then, uh, and then close it. So it, it's, once you get those two steps, uh, down and it, it took a it took a fair length of time to sort of get those two steps down. It's um, it it you know just explaining it now. It's it's really easy, but I've been practicing it for an hour when I did the um, did it earlier on, and uh, so it, it is easy now. But when I started um, yesterday doing this. I spent quite a lot of time referring to diagrams and looking backwards and forwards at, uh, at the things and trying to decide which which place things want it to go through and and stuff like that. So now I go through the pink, the yellow and the blue and I know I've got it right if I go through the same colour sort of the third ring I go through is the same colour as the one I'm holding and then the final pink. And it's not actually a particular. Sometimes with some of the weaves as well, like um, I don't like the, uh, the the full Persian weave, for example, which is this one, which is sort of just it's almost like two chevrons going in opposite directions. This one is sort of a little bit awkward to get the rings through, just because of the way the the rings are, are bent and the shapes you're trying to get them in. 
and yet this one um, is is well, apart from the rings trying to escape. Uh, this one is quite easy to feed the uh, feed the rings through and pick up the rings that you're after. Uh, and yet, it, as um, Fear Reaper said, it looks complicated, but it's one of these that looks more complicated than it actually is to produce. I mean, the weave is complicated. I can't for the life of me understand how somebody had in their imagination the ability to come up with something that looked like that and understand how they'd done it <laughs> to be able to reproduce it. Now then, that way. Got to remember this way because I've got to get that bottom right corner or bottom right top left got to go through that pair not the other corner I imagine if I go through the other corner it just reverses itself so that might be uh, might be a sort of a variation that you could do on this you know every so often reverse the twist or something um, but uh, I'm not about to try variations yet until I've got at least one that um, I've done without using uh, variations, either accidentally or on purpose. Okay. So we've now done that. I've got yellow, we're now onto pink. So through the yellow, through the blue, third one's pink, so now I'm doing it right. And through the final, final yellow. Now it's really just a, as they say, a rinse and repeat. Um, you just keep doing, following exactly the same pattern um, with each ring in turn or each colour in turn until you reach the length that you're after. I am slightly off frame again, aren't I? And that way. And we're now into blue. It is that way. Yes, it is that way. I got it right this time. So, I've got a, I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of spare time now while I'm doing this. So, if anybody has got any particular questions about um, what I'm doing, chainmail, or about any of the other crafts, and uh, some of them, if not all of them, I'm not sure now. I'll have to check. Uh, are described below, below the stream window, but uh, we've got. Um, which gets shown uh, on stream, we get pyrography, we get scraper board, we get punch craft, we get uh, relief carving and the chain work. So if anybody is interested in any of those and wants to ask any particular questions about them, that's okay, I don't mind. Now I'm sure that some of those, some people are going, what? whatever, you know, insert particular craft. So I'll just give you, whilst I'm doing this, I'll give you a rundown of each of them. So pyrography, literal translation of which, because it's got Greek roots as the word, um, is uh, fire writing. Um, but in my case, I don't use fire and I very rarely write uh, with it. So I generally more translate it as uh, painting with heat. It's a method of using an electrically heated um, tool to uh, cause wood to change colour. And the image is then created from that uh, colour changing in the wood, controlling how much the colour changes, how dark it gets uh, to produce the image. Another nine, seamless. Um, that sounds like a television program. Not quite sure what you're asking there. If we're talking about the rings, the idea is to um, to close them such that 
it's seeing the the join is is hard and uh, there are times when there's a ring closed like that I can only just see it and sometimes I can't see the join and occasionally I can't even feel it with my fingers uh, which makes it interesting if I've got to open the joint if that's what you mean but so uh, they're not um, we don't weld them or anything like that they are just closed under their own um, uh, under the, using their own force so to speak but um, they, that takes quite a bit of uh, force to do that now then I have just done what with that side I've passed it through those so this one is putting on holding it that way and catching the corners Uh, so I've said uh, what pyrography is. Scraper board is one that most people tend not to have heard of before. Uh, it, although it kind of is um, self-describing in a way, but um, it's a it's a backing board of some kind, either card or wood gets used amongst other things, uh, which is then coated with a layer of. Um, Porcelain clay, so really white fine clay, uh, and then once that's that gets smoothed down and uh, and flattened, and once that's dried, it then gets coated with Indian ink, uh, which is a which is a, a dense black ink, and uh, again once that's dried, and, and I, generally speaking, I buy these things ready made. I don't make them myself. Um, the the way in which you then create the image is by using a, a sharp, any sharp object basically. Whether it's um, you know, it could be a scalpel, could be a knife blade. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, metal spike, nail, razor blade. You can use things like fiberglass um, pencils. All sorts of implements basically as long as it's sharp enough to scratch uh, scratching through the black uh, Indian ink will then reveal the, the white clay underneath and depending on how you do that scraping and how much scrape gets into a particular area determines how your how light your eye sees it um, so you, you can create like a gray scale uh, image and create what is effectively a like a black and white um, picture um, and then that can, if you uh, choose to do so, it can be. Um, uh, you, you, sorry, I'm just sorting out this. Um, you can then. Um, excuse me a second. This one is being a little bit awkward. I have just done there. I'm putting the blue through that pink, that yellow. Okay. Um, you can you can coat the uh, so you can um, use coloured ink then over the uh, uh, porcelain clay if you want of the scraped areas uh, to create like a coloured image and that can be scraped again so you can you can sort of get an infinite infinite variety of uh, colours and patterns and create some really beautiful pictures that way then. So there's then punchcraft. Punchcraft is a bit like miniature rug making. I mean, it is actually uses a technique which is used for making uh, making rugs, occasionally for carpets, but not usually because carpets don't often use loops. Um, but um, what it what it basically is is you use a needle, a special type of needle, uh, through which thread is is passed down the centre. Uh, to uh, you punch the needle through the, the material dragging the thread with it and then you withdraw the needle uh, leaving the thread in place so you create a loop of uh, a loop of thread and but using that technique then changing the colors and varying the lengths of the loops you can create pictures and uh, even pictures with texture on the other side so you, you work from the back um, but obviously view it on the front and you can get some interesting pictures though it's a bit like pixel art but 
you haven't got the pre the precision of pixel art. You know, you can't sort of uh, say there's 16 loops across um, unless you are really, really, really skilled at being very exact as to where you put the loops. But then when they on the other side, they'll just move around of their own accord. So it's not quite as precise as pixel art, but it's the same sort of idea. And then the other one um, I mentioned was relief carving, which is uh, carving wood. Um, the relief bit, though, is a lot of people. It's probably what a lot of people do think of carving when they see it, um, as, uh, of what they see when they see carving, and what they imagine carving is. A lot of people will imagine relief carving, and and still there will be other people that actually imagine 3D carving. And there's, there's the the difference really is a bit like. Uh, how do I describe this? Um, full 3D carving is a bit like a statue. You've got a statue, it stands on its own feet, there's nothing around it when it's finished. Relief carving is a bit like taking an object, cutting it in half and then sticking it to a backboard. So it stands, it stands off the board but it's actually um, joined to the board behind it. So it's a bit like you've, you've mounted it in a picture frame almost, that sort of idea. Um, although you don't actually do it that way, you start with a straight block of wood and you um, uh, literally uh, form the, the object out of that block of wood, uh, leaving, leaving the back plane alone. So it takes a bit of skill to do that um, and to, to form that uh, that back plane. And I do it using uh, just hand tools. Whilst I do have power tools, they um, they create a lot of dust, and I can't actually do that in the studio position uh, just because of all that dust that gets created. I need an extractor fan, which is uh, sited elsewhere in the studio. Yeah, and I can't actually broadcast from that position at the moment. Now, at some point, we will probably add an extra, uh, an extra craft into the. Now, something isn't quite right. That one didn't go through properly, and that ring has. Okay, so now I've got to find the end of this. It's there. This time I can feel it with my finger, but I can't see it. It's there. Um, it didn't go through the rings prop, the right rings. It didn't pick up the yellow one, which it was supposed to have done there. Um, yeah, I was going to say I was uh, maybe add at some point. I've got some pearl beads. Um, which I want to um, to make something with. So fusible beads, perla, it gets cold, and um, amongst other things. So I hold it. Nope, it's that way. Yeah. Uh, pink, blue next. And uh, at some point, I've also got a 3D printer to build. So I'd like to be doing some 3D printing sculptures as well. Just making sure that these line up. The rings themselves do relax sometimes. They they have a memory for where they were, um, in the position they're in for a long time. And uh, when you bend them, they have a tendency to want to revert to that position. Which so I'm bending this sort of clockwise. If I don't sort of uh, reset that memory then it keeps wanting to just untwist and uh, twist backwards anti-clockwise and it will separate the seam a little bit. If that happens it's just a matter of just grabbing it with the pliers and closing it but uh, do try and uh, after the blue there's yellow do try and reset that in a couple of ways and you'll uh, sort of see me do that 
uh, with rings you'll see me twist it backwards and forwards a few times that does two things one it helps reset that member by making the twist at the bottom a little bit fluid for a while such that when you stop it then settles into that position but that also has uh, does something called work hardens it. so it actually makes the ring stiff at that bend point which then you know, you've reset the um, well, you've attempted to reset the memory and you've stiffened it to sit in the position you've just put it so both are working then uh, to keep the rings fully closed which is the ideal position but um, yeah, the rings are all subject to these sort of effects so occasionally you'll do see the odd one which is slightly out of place on a bracelet or a necklace like this it's not really a problem if they've, they've shifted slightly um, occasionally it might just you know give you a little bit of a scratch you might sort of feel it as though something's just sort of tickling you a little bit um, but then quite often you know just the just a slight movement of the whole chain and and you won't feel it anymore uh, it's not particular it's not detrimental at all to the strength of this coming I mean, these chains are well put it this way i probably i'm almost certain i couldn't pull this apart i'm sure somebody you know some of these big bodybuilders might be able to but there again they might not uh, with every ring sharing the stress with six other rings there's a lot of stuff holding <laughs> uh, holding it together. Uh, I've just used yellow, so I now want to use pink again. Um, so they uh, they can be exceptionally strong, and even even the simple uh, two-in-one chains, which are about as simple as you can get, are, are relatively strong. The shape of the rings does seem to add strength over what it would be if you were just getting a piece of wire. Um, on its own, it's uh, it, they don't feel as strong, but um, it does take a fair bit to pull to pull a chain, even a simple chain, apart. Okay, all right, and that's okay. Occasionally, like then, the um, the ring does slip, so I just examine it, make sure I've not scratched the ring. If I have, I throw it away. If I haven't, it's okay. So they, you know, the rings are relatively resistant to things like scratching. Um, I, I will say relatively resistant. You can scratch them if you try. You know, if you're going to rub it along the side of a brick or something like that or a stone, you will scratch it. So you do have to take a little bit of care with uh, this sort of jewellery. Just like anything else. I mean, if it was silver or gold, you kind of would take a bit of care with it. You don't want to be leaving gold around on a brick or anything like that and this is kind of the same you don't want to be leaving the color which is the 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 dye the blue or whatever around on something so just don't go scraping it down things uh, blue on the other side Yeah. through the through the pink through the gold through the blue and through the final pink see how far we've got with this let's move over see how long this is for some well I was about to say for some reason these are often measured in inches rather than centimeters but we are just around uh, six inches so the length of this chain wants to be about seven and a half um, I know you can't quite see the markings um, wants to be about seven and a half because a, um, a clasp is about half an inch when it's when it's added so I want a seven and a half inch bracelet so I'll need to set this to about seven inches, so add about another inch, and then um, then this one will basically be done. So what's this in centimeters? I could do the mass seven times or whatever six times two point five four, but given that I've got a ruler, we're at uh, about fifteen point three centimeters. 
Right. Uh, okay, so this is where I get to work out. I've held this in the right position again, and this time I have. So we've just done blue, we're back to the gold. I've no idea if I use like four colours or six colours, for example, whether you still see, you know, it would look the same, but if I just use like six colours used them in rotation, then um, it would form some sort of pattern, I guess. Because it takes, it takes three colours to, to repeat the cycle. Or six rings to repeat the cycle. So the cycle repeats every six rings. Which I guess would be what uh, gets called. One of the terms that gets called, it, um, it gets used in chainmail is unit. The unit is, is sort of the thing that then repeats. So like every six rings I'm repeating the same sequence again so those six rings form a unit. Um, not that you have to have a unit, I mean this is a, I, I guess is a half finished unit but that's how I will probably, f well possibly I might finish it like that. Uh, so I've just used gold and pink. Um, I say possibly um, I might finish it that way. I've never finished one of these before. This is my first time doing this particular weave. And this weave is called Candy Cane. I'm guessing because of the um, the way in which it's supposed to uh, twist. Uh, Novik Kaljoy, thank you very much for following. That's very nice of you. I do appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. Um, right, next one. Uh, I go through the yellow, through the blue, through a pink that doesn't want to cooperate. That's in there. And then we pick up the gold again. I think that, yep, that's right. And it's sat in the right position now. Of course, if there's anybody else out there that's not following, feel free to push that follow button and you too will get that graphic appear on screen. Which is an airbrush, by the way, in case you don't know what it is. It is an airbrush. That is another art form that I do, but not on stream at the moment. Uh, again, it's a um, kind of a, um, a space problem. My, You're looking at my uh, studio space. Don't have a lot of it at the moment. It's something I'm working on, but it will be a while before I can... Uh, resolve that and once I do then I might be able to do things like uh, some airbrushing or something where I need um, anything more than a flat uh, a flat desk so I'll pick those two so the airbrushing generally you don't well you don't generally use uh, do airbrushing flat on the desk you tend to do it up on an easel of some kind it's a lot easier to do that way and you're a lot less likely to spill paint all over whatever it is you're airbrushing as well. You can do it on desks, but you tend not to. Um, generally speaking, I also like to run the extractor fan as well. And as I mentioned that earlier, that's on the other side. And... Um, It'd be something I'd actually have to try out as well. See how the microphone copes with having, uh, probably with being set on top of an extractor fan. Uh, so I've just gone through the call, uh, through. Yeah, I've just gone through the corners. Okay. So now I need to go through the. Through the ring sequence blue pink yellow and back through the blue again i keep calling it yellow it's actually gold here's the color the yellow is a lot more yellow <laughs> mm.
Hmm? I ought to do is note, note down how long it takes to do uh, something like an inch of this. That way then I'd know how long it takes to do sort of eight inches or six inches and things like that. Um, because that's one of the difficulties sometimes we're doing, um, well, I will say it's difficulties, um, you know, a seven inch takes less time than an eight inch, but how exactly long, I don't know. But something like this, which is got like six rings to every one, it doesn't grow fantastically fast, at least not in smaller ring sizes. I suppose not in big ring sizes either, relatively speaking. But... Um, Whereas some of the weaves that use less rings in, in a unit, they can grow really fast. So um, you know, things like half Persian, this sort of thing, grows relatively fast just because you can see there's, there's not very many rings. When you compare that to, um, say, so that one, as you can see, there's a, there's a lot more rings in the same space. So... Uh, the one on, I'll say the left, um, the one nearest my picture here grows a lot, uh, a lot faster than the one on the right. Although personally, I prefer making the one on the right to the one on the left, especially when you start. Um, when you start a, a weave like those two are half Persians, and when you start a half Persian weave, I've done yellow pink next. Um, they are relatively difficult to start. Um, this weave I'm doing here, for example, was really easy to start. Six rings and I'm away. With the um, half Persians, you tend to have to do something like about 12 rings, that sort of order, before it will hold its shape. And, in, and it's not until it holds its shape that the pattern really becomes obvious. Uh, and, and then the fact that it holds its shape, it holds the pattern um, that you're trying to weave into it it then sort of becomes easy. If you put it down, you can pick it up uh, and just carry on. But up to that point, if you sort of put two or three rings on a, a half Persian and put it down, you can then spend the next 10 minutes moving rings around, trying to work out which one goes where uh, before you can carry on. So, you, uh, so when you start something like that, you tend not to want to put it down. You try and hold it in your hand and hold rings in position and it's can be quite fiddly to start. And quite satisfying weaves to do, they're just a little bit fiddly to start with. Once they're started, they then, again, it's like anything else, it just becomes, um, gets easier with practice. Um, and it gets easier, you know, the more times you uh, you start them as well. Um, this one, as I say, it, it uses, a, uses a, uh, the start sequence that a by a Byzantine chain uses or a box chain and after six rings they're stable um, they hold the shape and you can just carry on from there and that made starting this one which is a relatively complex weave as you see um, almost a pleasure to do um, gold then blue and then that's it about now I start to wonder whether chat has crashed. Whilst nobody said anything for 20 minutes, apart from me. Uh, I've just done blue. Now let's see. Gold. So this afternoon I've spent most, well actually I spent most this weekend working on the website. So I'm hoping that's getting closer to being finished. So then what I'll have on there is a couple of things. One is um, a place where you can see all the other the art forms that I've, I've done on stream. I think I'll keep it to what I do on stream. Maybe I will. I don't know. I'll have a think about that. Uh, it certainly will have a section on it where there's... Um, don't know if he's around, but one of the uh, one of the viewers to the stream has made me actually three art pieces of his own, but they they involve uh, my stream name, uh, Zaragon Art. So 
there's a, a couple of uh, moving uh, small movies um, where the word of the names are going out the street the channel name is chipped out of wood looks really cool and at some point I'm going to try and use those as uh, part of the intro and, and outro sequences um, but he's also did a, a 3d single image render of I don't know if you've seen the ring from the Lord of the Rings but it's it's likes like that with Zaragana in glowing letters across it looks really cool so I want to get that on the website as well I want to show that off it's it's a fantastic piece of um, uh, piece of 3d work um, which I'd l dearly love to get on there uh, so this is going to go across the corners and also there will be a shop there where you can buy some of these things if you feel like it and so can anybody else for that matter um, Because you might not realise it, but some of these um, some of these art forms uh, cost a bit of money, and I'm doing a lot more art than I ever used to. So, if anybody is interested I, uh, in some of the stuff that um, I do do, I'm quite willing to sell some of it. It'll help um, keep uh, keep me help me to keep doing new things on the stream. like this or some new art form i mean it's, you might be surprised but things like a ring depending on on the size of it but um off the top of my head i don't know what these are but something like four or five p per ring per single ring and i don't know how many of this has got in it but i haven't i haven't counted them but there's going to be well in excess of 100 maybe 200 rings so you can see they soon add up um in terms of just pure quantity of materials. There we go. And things like the uh, the punch uh, craft where uh, you, you easily go through hundreds of metres of threads. And uh, I actually can't remember what the cost of those are per, uh, per 30 metres. But again, they, um, they soon add up when you're using them. Have I got that right? Because it feels a little... Oh, it looks okay. Hey, I got that the right way around this time. So pink, we go blue. Control. Ah. Oh. Just in case. Since I think my uh, feedback window has, uh, stream has failed, I thought I'd just reboot, re reboot, restart the uh, the chat uh, chat window and just check. Hmm. Not convinced. Anyway, so if you're watching, and you are saying things in chat, and I'm not responding. My chat might have crashed. Maybe I should do the clairvoyant act, you know. Is there anybody there? I don't know whether I believe in them or not. <laughs> and yeah, that's gone through the right way. Ah, uh, yellow. I'm not sure whether I believe in ghosts and spirits and I'm not sure whether or not I believe that people can sense that they're there but I don't disbelieve it if that seems doesn't seem daft I don't necessarily believe it I don't disbelieve it a uh, bewildered update uh, thank you for your reaper. Mm. Uh, Noriko Joy, you've done some chain mail, have you? Oh, that sounds interesting. What have you? Uh, what have you made, and using what? Um, and 
uh, do you do it on stream? Because if you do, I'm quite likely to want to watch you. I think um, a few people in the uh, I've come across in the past have uh, have tried doing a bit of chain mail for. I thought of a moth in here, uh, armor base type stuff. Um, And uh, I often, well, I have found sort of people that seem to be quite uh, surprised you can make jewellery out of it, for example. Let's see how long I've made this now. Uh, okay, so we're about um, probably about another four inch short of seven inches. Uh, so I'm going to be going across the corners, and yes, it's that way again. I've just um, so we're back to the pink. Oh, you bought a kit? Oh, so you, you've actually been making jewellery stuff? Oh, no, don't worry about that. Um, most likely, if you bought a kit, it was probably, because a lot, a lot seem to be, because they're easy, it'll be one of two, usually. I'll just show you, I've got some examples. So one of the most likely that you got as a kit would have been one that looked like this. Well, maybe different colours, but this sort of thing. Uh, and this is called a Byzantine weave. Um, and this this is one of this is often used for kits because eh, it looks pretty. It looks nice. Uh, it's not fantastically complicated to do. Uh, as I, and this is the one I referred to earlier with sort of six rings. So like the two gold, and then the, these these are lavender. Uh, the four um, are fairly easy to just fold over and then that's stable and then you just put another two rings through and just repeat so it's not a, a difficult one for people to learn to start with as well so yeah that's the one yeah uh, it, it's it's often that one or occasionally what it'll be is one called a box chain which is almost the same um, as a as a Byzantine and it's kind of like just that fold back bit without the uh, without the gold bit in the middle so the 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 uh, if you think it start start then you just get the fold over if you immediately put another one and folded it over you would form this uh, the box chain underneath um, the the gold rings that are in the middle sort of um, space it out a little bit and actually reverse the next fold sort of thing <laughs> It actually moves it 90 degrees uh, to create that sort of shape, whereas the box, obviously, because it doesn't have that, it just moves it um, uh, along there. You've got another kit with Swarovski crystals. Oh, I actually just finished a... I haven't got it here. Um, last week, early, uh, late last week, I actually finished um, a bracelet um, with Swarovski crystals. Uh, it was three strands, so it was kind of like three rows of, I'm drawing on the desk, three rows of Swarovski crystals uh, joined together with, um, well, silver coloured aluminium rings uh, into into a band uh, and then uh, some still, a sterling silver clasp on, it, on the end um, to, uh, to hold it in, in place and uh, they look at the Swarovski crystals look really nice and actually it was a relatively easy um, a, again a relatively easy kit, uh, kit to do because it was literally just sort of putting a uh, sort of two rings through a Swarovski crystal and just building on that basically and uh, it produces quite a spectacular result it's time consuming I'm afraid but um, um, I mean I think the the one that I finished had, it didn't have 90, it had 87 Swarovski crystals in it. Uh, each crystal had two other rings through it. Yeah, so through every ring there was effectively four rings apart from the Swarovski crystals I just had. But it, it's, it's beautiful. I, I'd sort of highly commend you having a go. 
And although you don't stream yet, if you were going to stream, I would probably watch it. I love watching people do things, physically do things. Um, I spend more well, I spend more time watching those on uh, on Twitch than I do um, anything else. Although um, I do like the the electronic artists and things like that as well. I mean, they're all different crafts. I just, uh, generally speaking, when I'm watching, I tend to want to watch the uh, the physical crafters more than the electronic crafters or artists. But um, fantastic thing that ring has. No, I thought it had. I thought it had shifted slightly. It hasn't. Um, I've got some spotlights in the roof which are LEDs and so they're multiple LEDs in, in one spotlight case and occasionally what you'll get is I'll actually see multiple on on the white uh, on the here the shine I'll some that the, the spot you're seeing there is mainly from the the one lamp I've got here but occasionally I'll see um, some of the other LED spots just catching in here it looks like it, it looks exactly like a ring that hasn't been closed properly and yet um, in this case it looked exactly like a ring that hadn't closed properly but it, it was uh, through watching games then you found the creative you just what oh you just discovered twitch recently uh, I've been it's about a year and a half now I think I oh, know it's even longer than that um, since I discovered twitch and I used to watch um, used to watch the the game streamers of course uh, and one day I discovered playing game new blue, blue now I did I uh, one of the games I used to watch is Minecraft and one day on there I saw an artist drawing Minecraft related uh, art uh, artillery 82 I think JB drawing um, and I, whenever he was on, I used to watch him because he was doing electronic art. I like doing electronic art. I'm, you know, I'm an artist, so I enjoyed watching him whenever he was uh, streaming. And then one day I noticed, I saw his his you know favourites because he was favourited, and it sort of said you know Artillery eighty two on creative or playing creative. Like, What's this creative game? And I realised you could click the creative bit, so I clicked it, and then there's a whole list of people. Um, doing all sorts of stuff and I have not I, I basically haven't watched a game streamer since then that's a bit of an exaggeration but that night I was up till about two o'clock in the morning watching creative streams and um, for several nights afterwards and essentially since then I've not watched anything else I do occasionally how have I picked up there? Am I picking up the corners? No, I'm going across there. Um, I do occasionally. There's a, there is actually a couple of game streamers I do watch um, from time to time uh, if they're on. But um, generally speaking, I'm, I'm hovering around somewhere in, in creative, in some stream, probably lurking, to be honest, most of the time. Um, but there's some fantastic artists out there. Uh, just a few of the ones that I um, I watch. We've got Cannon Bear. Actually, I haven't watched him for a while, but he's um, um, he um, he's doing a lot. Of, oh, last time I saw, him, he was doing a lot of drawing, but he did do some pyrography at one point. Uh, the CJ something or other. His name is always escapes me. It's uh, he does um, clay sculpting. Um, of course, you'll have seen C not Bush um, doing doing his uh, stuff uh free d block who does um airbrush mainly uh, but sometimes the the heavy stuff the heavy stick um, paint bushing um i was going to measure how long this has got to and oh uh, 80 fall guy who does some of this chain mail stuff that yeah, ring isn't closed but i am at seven inches so i am actually at the right length Oh, that ring has closed. I'm just being fooled by the light again. So, um, what we've done here is we've reached we've reached the end of this. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to pick one of these rings at random. 
and all I'm going to do is just put it to, uh, across here just to hold these in place so I've just gone sort of diagonally across to just to hold those four so a single ring because usually I, I can only fit a single ring through a clasp and I'll just um, hold that there so that is complete and what I'll probably do at some point is take the the Byzantine start on here is a little bit um, looks a little bit wrong so what I might just do is take that off and uh, and do exactly what I've just done on this side which is sort of bring all four rings together into a single ring I can do the same thing on this side when I take those pink ones off with the blue and the underlying yellow and just grab all four in one uh, and it sort of nicely closes it off in like a rounded end so that is one complete Let's go to you. Yeah, okay, there's a couple to watch out for. And then um, there's somebody doing wax clay. Um, I've forgotten who that one is now as well. But it, it is clay sort of wax based rather than oil based or, um, or, or water based, um, which is quite an interesting one. Uh, and you've, if you've done glass sculpting and bead making, then you may well have come across Pokey Ranger 69 who is a uh, broadcast on Twitch, generally, well, I'm in the UK, so I generally see him from about 9 o'clock in the morning, but he's in the somewhere in the US, I think. Um, he, he tends to start somewhere around midnight US time and, and works through the night, through till something like 10, 12 o'clock, or even later, um, his time, the next morning. Uh, he does glass blowing, glass sculpting, marble making, so you might want to keep an eye out for him. Um, yeah, Pokey Ranger 69. He seems to be doing a lot of water pieces, water pipes at the moment, and everybody seems to want to watch him do water pipes. I'm getting a bit tired of watching water pipes. I'm fascinated by uh, glass blowing and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the glass sculpting torch, torch work. Um, really fascinated by I I spend hours if I come across that in a shop watching watching the sculptor but I must admit I'm getting a little bit tired of seeing water pipes I'd love to see him make some of the marbles or flowers he was going to make and he keeps them um, putting up uh, straw poles and everybody everybody votes for the water pipes uh, and so he keeps doing them right what I'm going to do is use some bigger rings and try the same thing again Yeah, he kind of does. He, 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 it's you know, it's he's not just blowing. He's sculpting the the blows and and uh, sculpting and then you know you know what I mean. It's just basically using that as a technique. So, um, but yeah, keep keep an eye out for him. Um, it, it'll be another several hours, I think. But um, I, I think he's got some vods uh, video on demand. So if you keep if you do a search for him, you should be able to find find some of them. Uh, right, I'm going to put these rings away. I don't need these little ones anymore. I'm going to try some. Try and do the same weave in, in a larger ring. Just to see what it's like. And different colours as well. So we've used kind of pastel colours. Well, I'm now going to use some more solid co uh, sort of colours to do it with. But I haven't seen anybody else doing any glass work. So you prefer making beads? Oh, that's all right. That's a different thing. Is that something you still have the capability of doing? You said you'd done it. Um, is it something you, you still have the capability of doing? Because uh, certainly it seems um, glasswork does seem to be a popular thing to watch. Um, his, uh, his channel has grown phenomenally quickly. I'm not jealous. I am not jealous. He is a, you know, he's a great uh, artist to watch. So, um, and it, you say it has grown phenomenally quickly. And it, you know, it's always got several hundred people watching him. So, right, I'm going to use these three colours, and we'll try doing the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry, you're uh, you're ill. I hope you do feel better soon. 
and yes I can understand it takes a fair bit of offer, uh, effort and yeah I am I do understand that it needs oxygen this day <laughs> oxygen and um, I think he's using propane obviously I don't know if you I assume you probably do the same um, I learned that watching him and as the guys on um, on this channel will probably say when I because I, I like trying new things um, I haven't tried it and I have no intention of trying it to which they usually add yet <laughs> But uh, given that this is my space, I don't think I'd do very well with a uh, a propane torch sat in front of me here with uh, in this small space. So let me get some of these rings out and ready. I'll do a few. I won't get too many of these out just to start with. Um, because it might... Oh, actually, what's the aspect ratio? 5.4, okay. Apparently the ideal, um, what they call the aspect ratio, and these are a lovely, in this light, they look blue to me, but they're a purple blue. On the camera they look blue. Don't know why, it's just something about the colour, the lighting colour I guess, which is just tinting them blue. But they're, they're um, a, they've got a, they, they do sort of look blue with a purple It's hard to describe. I can look at them and go, they're blue, but the but with a purple cast, a purple look to them, so they're on the purple side of blue. If that sort of makes sense. You need a camera to strip. That is true. Yes. Well, at least uh, to to stream the physical stuff. Um, but it doesn't need to be fantastically. I mean, the this one is is a decent camera. Um, the Logitech 920, which is a, an HD 1980 by 1020 camera. Um, Amazon were doing those on Prime not so long ago for well 30 UK pounds. So that'd be about 40 dollars, I guess, um, if indeed they were doing it in the states. Um, but the camera that you're looking at me on is an old Microsoft something or other camera. It's about five years old. It, it's I think it does 720, I think. I'm not sure, to be honest, because I clip it and um, shrink it to go in the corner. But uh, So it doesn't need to be a great deal. So I love I love encouraging people to stream. And then when they do things like, yeah, like you do with you know, glass work and stuff like that, that I'd love to see um, a kind of self-interest. Uh, I'm going to use my big pliers. I'm going to open these. Actually, I'm going to need, yeah, I'm going to need to close four rings. So I'll leave myself four, which I'll close. I'll use the green as my starting uh, set. So let me just push four over to one side. Just to close them later, and we'll open the rest. Oh, there's a closed one already. Okay, that will be from something I did earlier with these rings. Uh, no, yeah, no, I understand. It took me a while to uh, to save up, and uh, I, I, the microphone I, I'm using is a uh, a professional microphone, shall we say? I had to borrow that money to uh, to do it, so I'm still sort of saving up for the for the microphone. This camera belongs to another PC, so that I use for work. So I've kind of just uh, keeping the technology in active use for my work, you see. <laughs> So that when I need to use it, I know it's going to work. Um, you understand that? Do you like the tool for up? Yeah, it. I've only just started using it. Um, I know I, I have up until this point preferred just to use the two, um, the two sets of pliers. But it actually is. It is quicker. You can only use it for opening rings. Though. 
you can't use it to close them because when you close them you don't only twist you, you squeeze the ends together so this is it's got three different um, holes in it basically for obviously for the different sizes of rings so the the thicker the diameter of the ring um, if you try and put a small ring in a big space you have a tendency then to to apply too much pressure on the corners which might scratch your ring so you that's why there's the different sizes and you try and use basically the best fit the idea of course is you're not picking up and putting down pliers or having you might see me when I'm trying to close rings I'm uh, I spend a fair bit of time just positioning the the ring in the pliers to to be able to grasp it properly well of course I can save all that time when I'm opening rings by not needing to do that I just stuff it in there and twist and then spend ages trying to get the other rings off of it Try and escape. I'm opening all of these, and actually, I have no idea whether this is going to work with these. Um, I mentioned AR aspect ratio. For those that don't know, and I'm sure most of you are watching don't, unless you've been in the stream before. Um, AR aspect ratio is kind of a magic number. It's um. It's a number which is calculated by dividing the diameter of the wire by the internal diameter of the ring itself when it's closed. Oh, well, when it's open, I suppose, or closed. It's supposed to be the same. Um, and you come up with a, with a unitless number, like four, in this case, 5.4 for these particular rings. And um, what that, in most cases, will help you determine is whether a ring will actually work in a particular weave uh, dear. Um, yeah finding the rhythm once you find the rhythm it's <coughs> same with yeah, with the with the patterns once you get the get the idea of the pattern it works um, I was saying, yeah, the, the, the weave, so this candy cane weave has a minimum aspect ratio of, of about 4.7. So, so if you tried a ring that had 4.3, for example, which is less, either you wouldn't, <coughs> either you physically wouldn't be able to get the rings through each other, which I think is more likely, or... Um, what would happen is they just wouldn't hold the shape. Well, in the case of the weave, it probably means that there, there just wouldn't be the space uh, it, with the gaps between all the rings uh, to physically get get the get the necessary rings through. With other 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 weaves like Byzantine, for example, which rely on the rings sort of holding, sort of you, know, you fold a ring over and then um, you expect it not to pull out. If you get, for example, you use a, a ring which is um, got a higher aspect ratio than the upper limit, then what happens is <coughs> it basically just collapses. I'm just going to see if I've got one in here. I experiment, um, and I have got an example of a chain where Uh, I've got an example, I just don't know where it is. That's it. Just a, well, this isn't quite it, but this isn't this is close to it. Um Okay, let me show you a weave. This this is this is this isn't quite perfect, but this is what's called a Turkish round. It's a bit like a Byzantine, but instead of having four sides it's got six. So it's 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 going to be square, it's triangular, I suppose, type of idea. It's more round. Um, 
this is close to being a perfect aspect ratio ring for this. If you use the wrong one, that's exactly the same weave. So those two, exactly the same weave. But the aspect ratio of that ring is different to this. I think the rings are physically the same diameter, but this one's a lot thinner. And as you can see, it just falls apart. It's not as bad as one I did earlier, which fall apart, fell apart even worse than this. There's one at least you can sort of get hold of and sort of pull it into something resembling what it's supposed to be but not not fantastically well sort of works maybe as an as an earring perhaps it just about holds its shape but not not very well and that's that's um, an example of something that sort of exceeded the aspect ratio that's that it's meant for um, but the thing about the aspect ratio means that it doesn't limit the rings it, it, it limits the combination of factors so that's exactly the same weave with a different size ring but the aspect ratio is very similar between the two because this one is I, I, I don't know off the top of my head what the two are but I think they're very close to each other um, so it, it tells you you know it tells you whether you can use a ring you don't have to sort of say oh it's six millimeters wide or anything like that it's the AR the aspect ratio that matters um, as to whether it will actually work or not. Um, for some other weaves it, it, it is purely the ring size. So this one for example, which is a, an example of a weave called Helm. The physical size of those pink rings matters because they have to be able to encompass the four and go between the blue ring. So um, and I guess the blue ring you know, has to be physically larger than the pink rings to be able to slip, slip across in the middle. Because there's nothing really holding that blue ring in place other than the fact that it's it's got the pink ring through the middle of it. So sometimes physical size does matter to a ring. Um, but, uh, but for other times, for some of the weaves, it, it's down to the aspect ratio. And the size really doesn't matter as long as you get the right aspect ratio. Okay, so I shall just carry on opening a few more of these and then we'll have a go at weaving these because the aspect ratio looks reasonably favourable. Um, yeah, that one I've just finished, the rings were um, aspect ratio 5. These are 5.4, um, which is quite a bit of a difference actually. I know it doesn't sound much, but um, it can it can be the difference between something working and not working. Um, so we're about to see. That ring just escaped. And I shall pick it up before I roll my chair over it. Which will damage it. And I don't want that to happen. They ain't cheap. And I'm a Yorkshireman which means I am more stingy than a Scotsman and that's just to employ a racial stereotype <laughs> uh, right uh, okay I've got a few here I'll just uh, open the ones that I've got in my hand and we'll leave the other few I've got on the desk uh, to see if this actually works so I've got to close three green rings because I, um, I start with a Byzantine-like start. So I also use these pliers. These are parallel jaw pliers. So as you can see, they close. Um, the two jaws close uh, together in parallel. So they hold uh, rings, especially large rings, a lot better because they, um, they hold it across the complete uh, width of the ring so to speak whereas if you use pliers like this um, what they tend to do is hold uh, you can't really see it but I can I can sort of rock this ring backwards and forwards because it's only holding it at, at one point I can't actually move that one at all although I need to now because it's in the wrong place but there we go So 
So although I prefer the handles on these, I prefer using these pliers uh, just because of that parallel jaw. It actually holds it a lot more securely uh, and I'm less likely to um, squeeze the ring out of the jaws causing it to go ping or to scratch. Okay, well I can start this without using a diagram because it is simply the four rings over there which I then close and then I'll put a second ring through those four in parallel with this one when I close it properly like that one of those rings, one of those four rings, isn't closed properly. I saw the silver flash on the screen, that one. It's a slight tweak and it's closed. Actually it's gone. Sometimes you get rings like that. They'll just slightly, they just keep uh, you know, moving for a little while. That one, having closed it, moved again a little bit. So I'll then f just feed a second ring through. As I said at the start, this is all done with uh, pairs of rings. Now I'm doing that wrong. I'm doing that wrong. So before I go any further, no, I'm not. I am doing it right. I want to do that with them. That's how I want to get them. So I thought for the second I was doing that wrong. I wasn't. I'm just holding it wrong. You do that sometimes, you hold it in a certain way and it looks completely wrong and then you hold it in a different way and it, it, it it's right and was right the first time. Okay, because what I want to do is hold those two so I form two lots of three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow, well I'm going to take a little twist tie I've got off the one that I did earlier and we'll put it on these like that gives me something to hold on to then form those two into what would be the Byzantine starting position like that and now I don't start like that I start that way now then, we'll go to purple, I think. So if I remember, if I'm guessing right, I'll not pick, be dropping rings. I'll pick that up, and it will go through. You will go through there and there like that. I'm not even going to be well. I was going to say, I'm not even going to refer to my diagram, uh, starting position on the diagram. I'm just going with the one picture that I've had on screen for all of this stream uh, to help me remember the right way of doing this. So that's gone through there. That's I want to pick up. Go back down there. I've gone through those two, so I want to pick up the two at the other corner now. All right, swap pliers. The needle, sorry, the needle, the chain nose pliers are a lot easier to get hold of uh, rings with because they're just picking up on the um, uh, obviously on the pointy nose. So that goes through there, I believe twist that round backwards. Occasionally you end up with your wrists in some really funny positions. Now this looks rather loose for this but let's find out. So where's my cocktail stick? Is there.
Right, so we could uh, red. So I reckon I'm being rather brave here, trying to go do this without referring to my uh, diagram, but purple. That. <laughs> What happens about uh, squeezing rings out? That, that, and through there. Do I have a YouTube channel? Yes, but there's nothing on it. <laughs> um, that's uh, that's something for the future. I've um, I do record all of these, and one of the things my uh, one of my intentions is to time lapse some of this stuff and put it on YouTube. And I do have some plans for later maybe later this year to do some other things for YouTube but not there's nothing on there at the moment come on a long ring there we go through that space This is where the aspect. Ah, I've forgotten to go through the purple first. That's what it is. There we go. <clears throat> through the purple. Okay, let's close this with these pliers. Right, that way, that way. That's right. <clears throat> so, um, purple. Red, green. So if I've read it right, I go through those two there. This is looking really loose. We shall see. Okay, sorry. I uh, the the camera's really zoomed in, obviously, to to let you see, and it I have a tendency occasionally to wander off frame. So thank you for letting me know. Um. I think the aspect ratio on these is probably a little bit um, on the large side. But I'm going to persevere just a little bit and we'll just see what it looks like. I think it's probably going to look too uh, not so good, but. Um, Green, purple. So through the through the green and the red and the purple and the final green. So I these large rings actually are quite. Quite awkward. That green has also moved. There we go. So that green has opened itself a little bit and I just need to tweak that shut. It's moved only a fraction, but um, just enough. So the purple I went through there. <clears throat> okay, so the greens were the last ones. This is this is what I say about when you get to a certain ring size aspect ratio it starts they, they don't always sit how they're supposed to sit they just slightly go off as I say I think this this ring size is working but it's right um, looks like it's right on the edge it's, and that ring has moved again okay trying to just pick up pick up rings there we go I'm 
can see just a slight silver edge there. And now it's basically gone. So I just put the purples through. <coughs> nope, don't want the green in there. So it's sort of working. Not too in fact I'll put I'll I'll reposition that in a second. In fact I'll reposition it now. The, uh, the Byzantine rings at the start there are only just sort of holding, they're tending to want to fold out. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to reposition this. So through the two starting ones I'm going to slip it right through the that Byzantine unit. And then if I do that, that holds, that'll hold that starting block in place and then these will look that purple one's moved um <clears throat> i'm gonna have to go back through all of these so i hold that position there and i then go with red this is confusing me because i'm going clockwise through the colors on my desk but i went anti-clockwise before Mind you, of course, it's an easy thing to fix, isn't it? If I'm going anti, if I was going anti-clockwise before, all I need to do is take those rings and just push them that way slightly. Now I can go anti-clockwise, <laughs> and incidentally, I end up with a clearer desk in front of me. So I've got to pass that through the green and just through that purple. work this one a bit and hopefully it'll stay in position so that's the two reds and then I go to green uh, green yes so the green goes through the red through that purple through the green that's th there down there as well that green and then catch that red I do the same thing again on the other side so take the green catch the purple catch the other green and that's how I can tell I'm doing it right because it's green through green as the third uh, third ring I pick up if you hear the click that's normal that's uh, just the ring the two ends of the rings just clicking past each other that means they're really you know, they're really close. I've closed them up really close. Unlike that purple there. At least this is um, with fairly large rings. I'll be able to go back over and just tweak all of those afterwards. Now then, I hold it that way and take my purple ring and just snag the green and red across the corner. And then essentially uh, do the same but on the opposite corner. Use my fingers I think rather than the... So I'm going to snag the red and the green on the opposite corner. And close that up. then we go for the red I did not mean to do that you might have seen well you, you didn't see but there's an explosion of purple rings across the desk 
as I, uh, I just caught a container with a load of them in. So let me just move them out of the way. I won't bother. Won't bother picking them up at the moment. <laughs> They're safe on the desk, but so um, I've just used purple. I am about to pick up red, which is what I was doing. So I go through the purple, the green, the red, and the purple, and then swap players. <coughs> the larger rings, these. Uh, flat ones, uh, the larger flat nose pliers are a lot easier to work with. Incidentally the key thing about these pliers, in case you hadn't realised, is they've got no teeth on the inside. The, they are all smooth. If you, um, if you try using pliers with teeth in you're quite likely to actually bite through the anodization, uh, taking the colour off and then leaving behind uh, a, a a band of silver and indeed occasionally even with um, with these sorts of pliers you can uh, you can still do the same thing so a lot of people will often wrap a piece of tape around the pliers just so that no no sharp edges get to uh, get to the rings and I hold it that way. I can't get used to holding it the right way. Is it by the way? Yeah. Okay. So pick up through the purple and through the red. Exactly the same thing on this side, through the purple and through the red. Uh, Stangel1234, good evening. Is there any plastic? Yeah, uh, potentially I guess you could do that. Um, plastic dip, I don't know, I've never, never tried it. You can actually get plastic jawed or nylon jawed pliers as well. Um, kind of the difficulty with the needle, it's not needle, with the um, chain nose though of course is you then, you if you uh, sort of plastic dip them I guess, you uh, w obviously widen the, widen the gap and if you tried it, it's not so bad with these, but if you tried it with, um, with these, what you might end up with is if you, if you sort of plastic dipped all back here, um, you might find that you can't actually close the noses because the plastic in, in the earlier section here is, is holding it. So you, there might be a sort of a... You might only be able to do a very small piece right at the uh, at the front. It's really just... I mean, the, this hasn't got any sharp edges. I mean, you can... You could just take a, a file. If you've got a sharp on the edge here, you can just take a file. But that's... You need to use a very smooth file or envy paper, something like that. But that's... Um, I can't feel anything sharp on those edges, so I haven't bothered. Okay, so I took the green. Now, okay, now we go back to uh, the purple. Pick up the green, pick up the red, the purple. So, th purple through is third one through, so I know I'm doing it right. And then the final green. Good suggestion though. Um, the ones that you you know you buy the plastic um, or the nylon nosed ones that you you buy, if you like, the the metal has been ground back to allow for the plastic to sit in there, so they do close uh, together. So again, green, red. 
purple and pick up the green as the final. And just do a few more then we'll take a look at what it looks like. So that way, right. Still have to refer to my diagram to get that right. And I pick up the two lower corners there. And then I'll pick up the two opposite. close it or it very rapidly just bent itself back there we go and then I pick up a green so I use my other pliers for I go through a red purple greens third so now I'm doing it right and four It feels really loose, does this? But uh, it looks as though it's holding. But we'll we'll take a look at the pattern and compare it in a moment with the uh, with the finished one. I remember that time to hold it the right way around. Purple next. Now find ones that are actually opened because I, sp I spilt a load. Bottom right corner through just the two rings. And then opposite corner. And then we'll just go through with the red. So purple, come here, purple, green, red. And final purple. And do exactly that same thing again, but on the other side. Purple. Green, red, purple, and close it. Right, well, I'm out of green rings, which is kind of convenient at that point. So let's just grab hold of this. I'm going to put a cocktail stick just to hold it. So it doesn't look too bad. The end that I'm working on is, is raggedy, but once that's sort of held in place, it's not so bad. It's, it's, um, it's sort of holding its shape. It's a little bit, it's falling apart a little bit. I don't know if you can see, it's sort of just dropping out a bit. Um, probably, well, I don't know. 
it might work better as a necklace it's right on it it's it is kind of on the edge of looking really untidy when there's any sorts of tension on it though it's okay so it might be all right as a bracelet as a necklace it might look a bit untidy especially at the bottom where it sort of would sort of do that um, whereas if we look at this one which is slightly different aspect ratio it doesn't matter what I do with this one it kind of holds its shape all the time yeah you get a little bit of ring you know pushing out a bit but it, it's it doesn't look untidy when you do that uh, and I can sort of really push that around this one try pushing that around and it's sort of eh. I don't know I'll, I'll make it a bit longer tomorrow and uh, we'll have a look when it's when it's a bit longer sometimes the short length is a little bit on un, um, um, unrepresentative sometimes you, you can see straight away and other times um, at least it does sort of hold its position when it's put down it doesn't fall apart um, so and the colors don't look too bad Tosomja Predsa, hello, good evening and welcome to the studio. Unfortunately, you're just catching the end of the stream. Oh, my sunshade of the camera, there we go. Um, so, interesting sort of Christmassy colours, the green, the red, the purple. Um, look a bit more shiny here to those colours than the, um, I know these look really shiny. Uh, they're the lighter colours. The green ones are ever sh they sorry, the darker ones are as shiny. They're just darker colours. But there we go. Uh, unfortunately, that's it for tonight. We've reached a, just after ten o'clock. I normally stop just around this time. Uh, I've been broadcast now for just over t uh, about two hours. And uh, yes, thank you, Nori Joy, Nori sorry, Nori Joy. Thank you for following and I hope I will see you again and uh, if you do um, you do start streaming especially glass stuff let me know I'll, I'll try and drop in how come I thought you're ending now probably because I just told you <laughs> that's probably a good reason why um, I've been streaming for an, an hour and 55 minutes now um, so I, I generally start around about 8 p.m. in the UK that's 1900 hours GMT or as I say roughly about two hours roughly ago um, is, is when I start. I do that seven nights a week. So uh, Tom Soja Predsa, if you want to try and catch me tomorrow, you're quite welcome to do so. It will be, as I say, about two hours ago tomorrow uh, will be when I start. Or you could push the follow button and, tw uh, and um, Twitch hopefully will notify you or even um, follow me on Twitter uh, as I do tweet out when, I, when the stream goes live as well. And the details for the Twitter will be on the end plate in a moment. They're also below the stream window, just where that follow button is. <laughs> and um, it's arrogant art anyway, that's arrogant art, so it's fairly easy to remember. Um, so I want to say thank you for everybody and those that have been in chat. Um, oh, and see what happens is hosting me. Thank you, see what happens, but... oh. I suppose I should do about another 10 minutes now, shouldn't I? Now that I'm getting hosted by See What Happens. Chris, thank you very much for that. And so, to some Jepredsa, you're going to get a little bit longer. It won't be very long, though. It's uh, it's work tomorrow. but uh, So I'll, I'll, um, I'll open a few more green rings and we'll do a little bit more of this chain. Um, so... Hey, there you go. You get an extra, extra little bit of bonus because of uh, because of Chris there. Um, you've not been around for a while, Chris. I assume you're watching. Um, I did catch you a little bit of your stream earlier on uh, when you were doing the um, the Minecraft skin. Uh, so those guys in my stream who don't know, see what happens. He uh, he makes sculptures out of pipe cleaners. And I don't mean little tiny sculptures, I mean five foot high sculptures out of pipe cleaners. Well, I don't quite know how high his um, Minecraft skin is. Um, 
but what I did see of him doing a while ago, it looked quite large. Going MLG for the win. Hi, good evening. Oh, I'm free. Oh, he's not in free. Okay. I did see you um, chatting with him. Uh, no, I didn't. I saw you chatting with Pokey Ranger this afternoon. Um, got another uh, guy in, in stream here that does um, some glass, or did some glass work, but not, not streaming yet. I've been mm, hinting that he should have a go. <laughs> uh, so Noriko Joy there in, in stream. Uh, makes um, glass beads and things like that. Or made, should I say. He's uh, not done it for a little while, I understand. So for those people that have come across from Chris, this technically is chain mail. It's not uh, not armour stuff though, it's, it's jewellery. So we do fancy chain mail. And... Um, these are aluminium rings. Chain mail is generally iron or steel, I guess, these days. That's just a, an implement I use to help me open rings fairly quickly. So, um, what we did earlier, and I'm, I'm doing a large version of this. This is called candy cane. I apologise, Noriko Joe, if I... I didn't. I, I I try not to mention one way or the other because obviously I don't know. Okay, I shall try and remember that. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, Tom Sutter, Japeta. I'm in the UK uh, in a county called Yorkshire. And going MLG, you came from that guy who's hosting you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see what happens, Chris. So we're doing this. It's called Candy Cane. Um, I finished that one earlier. It's, it's a bracelet length, but it doesn't have a clasp on it at the moment. Uh, what I'm doing is just trying it in larger rings. Uh, Tom Soja de Pretza. Thank you very much for following. That's most kind of you. I do appreciate you doing that. Um, so I'm just trying it out just to see whether it works. I'm not... Going MLG for the win. Thank you also for following. Most kind of you as well. And again, I also do appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Um... I'm not quite sure whether it works. It looks a little bit untidy, but it's not bad. So I, I was kind of going to just keep going for a little bit of uh, more length on this and then we'd see whether uh, whether it worked OK. Um, so pick up the green. So I'm kind of just going to feed these through the corner like that. So I'll swap my pliers. Yeah. Sorry. Oops, so there's it. Throwing them around. So I just gotta twist the twist the ring to close it and, and squeeze it together a little bit. There we go. And then hopefully it'll stay in position. These rings spring back, they've got sort of a memory. And they do tend to spring back a little bit to where they were uh, previously. Uh, so I wanna catch the purple and the blue. To follow the pattern that I'm working to. And there, okay. So that's the simple bit of this pattern. Then I go from the green to the to the purple. I know this purple looks blue to you guys, but it's purple. Um <laughs> You're probably right, 3D block, but uh, um, no, it doesn't bother me either way. Um, really getting to chain mail. Well, I like, I enjoy doing it to be honest. And, um, and well, I, I spend about two weeks doing uh, any particular, at least two weeks doing any particular art form before I move on to the next one. So, um, those of you that don't know, free I know does. And that green ring has sprung back. Um, I do five different crafts, art forms, on on stream. Pyrography. Uh, so using a heated tool on wood to create an image. Punch craft, which is using a needle to force thread through mate uh, a material to uh, create carpet-like loops and form a picture that way. Um, scraper board. 
which is uh, a board constructed from china clay and indian ink which i then scrape the um, the indian ink away from it to form an image um, relief carving so that's again wood with sharp chisels um, and we we carve an object out of a solid piece of wood um, leaving like a like leaving it on like a back plate so as though it's framed oh this is a bit fiddly uh, take that ring out and try again that's one thing this um, with these 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 rings here um, I think are slightly too large to do this with and it's making it um, a little bit harder to work um, just call you Ara. I shall try and remember to do that uh, Ara. it's a bit easier than trying to say your other name <laughs> your full name uh, on your rings it's just you mm, okay um, no not unless I have a particular reason to do so uh, is it's the rings popping together um not sure yeah I am perhaps clipping a little bit on the mic <clears throat> um, I will talk a little bit less loudly perhaps I might need to turn it down it looks like I am just a little bit hot on the mic um, so I've used purple I need to go to the red now and yeah that's that way uh, and pick these two corner pieces up um, but you may also be hearing the um, the rings click together occasionally like there and if you're hearing that it's it's the two rings just catching each other and twisting them past each other uh, and that click is when they just catch and move past each other and, and basically that's telling me they're in contact so I can't get them any closer than that so if I just close them there's a slight gap and um, you can just see there's a slight gap so what I do is push them together and then I've got to get them past each other and then hopefully when I finish the twisting they'll sit in that position like that where the the gap is completely gone um, but these these rings have a memory type effect and they like this one which was closed is very got a very slight twist on it so i just need to tweak it a little bit uh to make that uh it, you know to sit it back in the ideal position and probably over another hour it's going to um or even next 10 minutes it's going to move again a little bit so i'm going to have to go over it again and um and, and just put the rings back into position again Uh, with a tighter weave actually than this the weave itself tends to hold the rings in position so the memory effect is less of a problem but this is very loose is this weave for this ring anyway uh, it probably would have worked with a slightly thicker diameter wire better than this it's a little bit thin is this one Yeah, that red one shifted. I don't know if you can just see, you see the silver. That's the um, that's the uh, the reflection just there. That's the ring has just twisted itself slightly. So what I'm doing, twisting it backwards and forwards like this, it um, doing that helps to reset the memory of the wire to where it wants to, to sit which is where I want it to be exactly aligned so I will just um, try and get my pliers in on that there we go 
and just tweak that one back into position there. Uh, I'll just do the reds, the green. So I've, yeah, that green has shifted again. Not only do I have this problem, I say with, with the other, with the weave being tighter, it doesn't usually have this problem. So I, I hold it that way uh, to do the blues. Oh, flash player causing you crash, okay. Uh, onion rings, actually, I don't know. I've not added it up yet. Um, and I'm not sure whether this one is um, suitable for sale. Um, I might wait until I get, well, I'm going to wait until I get a bit longer and see whether I'm happy with the uh, with this particular weave. Um, I say it's, it's, it's a little bit loose, so I'll wait and see. Um, that one will be for sale, though, but again, I haven't worked out the price. I've only just finished it tonight. I'm happy with that as a... Um, uh, an item that I could sell or, or make more of um, so I will be working out the price um, probably tomorrow sometime so if you are interested in one at the moment drop me a PM on, on Twitch tell me this is a uh, candy cane and um, as soon as I work out a price I shall let you know which won't be uh, won't be too uh, won't take me too long to do but I'm not going to do it on stream tonight I pick up the red and the green there. Come on, rings, I've just put you in position. Don't move that quickly. Right, so yeah, you see, it's it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit loose. That's not it's not instilling me with much confidence uh, of this. But uh, sometimes these things will work better, for example, as a necklace rather than a bracelet, or vice versa. So I need a I need a reasonable sort of length on it um, to sort of just see how they how it how it hangs. The short length that I've done so far is is enough to sort of see that it holds its shape more or less. Um, it doesn't fall apart as some as some weaves do if you're using the totally wrong uh, sized rings. As it, it it's it's a it collapses a little bit. It's a little bit what I call soft or flat compared with the other. It's still within an acceptable range enough at least for me, as I say, to carry on a little bit further with doing this. And um, and see see how a longer length actually fares. Uh, you need to find a way to oh to do. Um, isn't there a way of using a player other than the flash player? Um, no, there isn't, is there? You're stuck with a flash. Aren't they, I was going to say, aren't they supposed to be using... No, it's, it's YouTube that's using HTML5, isn't it? Um, I can't remember if there's a free um, freeware... Uh, hmm. At least in this application uh, of this, uh, in this weave with this rings, I'm not um, that keen on the fact I'm having to go back and um, and tweak all of these. So I've done red. So I'm back to the green now, and it's that way. So I pick up that one and that one. He must be think. He must think he's big using that word. Uh, 
Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, and now we could joy is that as a very good question i wish i knew the answer to it don't know they think they potentially they're going to shock shock you or something or me or, or something like that i don't know it doesn't right okay Green, red, purple. So I'm doing it right. Pick up the purple. All right, that's just. Uh, I just. Uh, I've got a few purple rings here. That I just need to open. Finishing a little bit more of the weave. Right, uh, I need another purple one. Yep, that's right, purple to go through this corner here. So green, red, purple and green. seen that movie well, I've not even heard of that movie to be honest but it kind of uh, sounds appropriate uh, I've just used purple I need to use the red Had me thinking then whether I got that right or not. I think so. At worst, if I've done that, I made a mistake with that. All I've done is reverse the direction of the reverse the direction of the neutron flow. Um, <laughs> um, I've uh, just reversed the direction of the uh, twist.
Mm, okay, yeah, that's right, I think. Through there like that. Uh, yeah, same here, now we called you. Same here. Um, don't cross the streams. Yeah, it is a bit like that occasionally, 3D. Uh, don't cross the streams. Uh, blue. Yeah, that's right, blue. Okay, I've got four blue rings left once I've done this, so we'll uh, we'll use those four. And then that will be it for tonight. So that's gone through the corner. So my next one's got to feed through the more center of the core of the chain. That's where I pick up four out of the rings ah. looks like another one uh, fairy reaper Purple, green, red, purple. <laughs> kind of nice. Well, uh, I'm not that good at picking colours, no, Um But um, that's partly why I just, uh, sometimes I just try it just to see. I mean, I know the sort of the green and, and purple, uh, I know it shows blue, but the green and purple uh, really do um, look look good together because of, um, of, of things like that one. Um, and, and the colours really sort of really do complement each other. So I was hoping just tying the red in so it's for sort of like a Christmas theme um, would um, would work really nicely. And it does seem to have um, to have done it. As I say, I might uh, might use red, green. Uh, might prefer to use slightly uh, different sized rings for it. But um, what I what I quite like doing with these is uh, with bracelets and, and necklaces is seeing what the extremes look like. So little tiny rings, or really big rings well i will say really big rings because i can go to sort of an inch or so but um you know rings that uh, are sort of a really generous size shall we say um and these are sort of on that uh, that level and uh, the size of the size of the, the the weave that's created looks doesn't look too bad I mean, it's a nice sort of chunky size. Uh, possibly work better as a, a necklace rather than a bracelet, I think, in terms of the size. Um, although, Noiko Joy, you might have a better idea than I do about that. Uh, and I will be asking my darling wife as well what she thinks, but because um, she's always good at that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, and, and if this sort of ring size does work, what I might try it with is some slightly thicker ones. Um, 
because I, I say I'm, I, it, it's acceptable at the moment, and, but I'm, I want to see how it looks longer. Uh, so I've just used purple, so I'm going to go back to these purple ones. So nearly, nearly done. Yeah, I think it was you this afternoon commenting 3D block. Yeah, I was just about to mention what you've just said. <laughs> I saw you mentioning the same thing to um, Pokey Ranger this afternoon. No, this morning, whenever it was, anyway. I do wish he'd do um, some of his other things, like the manager, the the. Um, Deep Sea Diver wasn't uh, wasn't too bad. I was about to say I do wish you'd do some of the other things like the marbles and the the flowers rather than just all the pipes. But um, you'll get there, I guess. Purple, red. Yes, I um, I didn't. I, I was concentrating on something else. So I was only sort of. I wasn't reading his chat, but uh, I do gather that um, that was precisely what was going on. Uh, so that went through uh, just the corner. So I now need to go through the full core of the chain. Oops, I'm off frame again. Ah. Well, that's tomorrow's project, is it free? I shall have to uh, see if I can catch that tomorrow. So I'll put these two blue on and hold it that way. Pick those two up. And then pick up the other corner two. With that one and that one. Uh, Gerald 30, um, not very long, I'm afraid. Um, it's um, I already extended it because of um, see see what happens. Who um, uh, hosted me at the end of his stream, just as I was about to stop. So we've. Um, just about to do it again I'm afraid and it will be the uh, it will be the end for today Un unless I suddenly get a host of about a thousand viewers <laughs> then um, uh, unfortunately it will be the end for today very shortly uh, my voice is um, I have not put that ring through correctly my voice is starting to uh, uh, to show it's uh, tired for today. I still haven't fully recovered from whatever it is that I caught 
still affecting my voice a little bit. Come along, rings. You're going to be awkward, aren't you? Just because. That's it. There you go. But uh, I will be back tomorrow at uh, 8 p.m. UK time, 1900 hours GMT, or about uh, what time is it now? About two hours and 40 minutes ago was eight o'clock in the UK. So it will be around about um, that time tomorrow night, two hours 40 minutes ago tomorrow night. Um, or you could just uh, follow me on uh, Twitter and get a notification off of Twitter. Or even off of Twitch itself. But I think that will do for tonight now. Ah, oh, well done, Noiko Joy. You hopefully will enjoy that. Normally, you see what I'd do at this point uh, on during the week is hand over to uh, Free. Free generally, well, not at this point because he just started about 45 minutes ago. But I generally finish about 10 just when Free starts. So you can watch me, then go watch Free. <laughs> Uh, it works quite nicely like that. Okay, that ring looks to be... Uh, something's out there. I've got one... I'll have to study that. One ring there just looks to be in the wrong position for some reason. But anyway, that's um, that's what it looks like in a larger... Uh, it's not so bad now that it's a larger chain. So for, for, for necklaces, it tends to bend a little bit like that at the bottom. It doesn't look too unragged. So that's not bad. <laughs> um, it's still sort of... Very, um, it, well, it does hold patterns. So that's not bad. It's a, it's a little looser than I'd like, but it's, um, that, that's the key thing. If it's, if it's held... Um, sort of, if it's in that sort of shape, you, you normally get it at the bottom of a necklace, depending on obviously how long it is. Um, and so it's holding a nice shape there. For for a, a bracelet, of course, it's it's wrapped around uh, a lot more, so it holds its shape a lot easier. Uh, so I think that works. So we'll uh, probably extend this one to bracelet length, and we shall see. Uh, Col uh, Colcawell. How creative that people can be. I'm not sure I understand the statement, but uh, welcome to the studio. Unfortunately, that's about it for this evening. Um, I'm going to study why that purple ring's in the wrong place. But anyway, um, so. Uh, what I may do tomorrow actually is back these last few out and redo that ring there. This particular ring doesn't seem to be in the right position. It's it's not particularly smooth. It sort of sticks out at one one side. All the rest is nice and tubular. Um, that ring, one ring, just doesn't seem right. So it's not sitting right with the red ring behind it. So I've obviously done something wrong just there. So we'll. Uh, I may fix it off stream or I may tomorrow night fix it or just back it back the whole thing and back down to there uh, and and fix whatever problem that is. I'm not quite sure this is quite a you know, it looks quite a complex weave so trying to work out what the pattern is uh, and how that ring should sit is a little bit difficult but um, we shall see. So we've done this so far as a test pattern. It's working reasonably okay. That bit is the bit I don't particularly like about it. It sort of looks a little bit untidy um, when it gets crushed together like that. You don't often do that though, either with necklaces or bracelets. So it, it's not bad. Um, it's still quite a nice sort of tactile uh, weave, which is what I like. Um, this is the one that we did earlier. Uh, yeah, and this one also is, I play with these for ages. I love just the way that they, they bend and they, they just feel a nice warm metal. But we finished this one. This was a bracelet for uh, uh, Old Bar, the, uh, the clasp to go on the end for uh, for another time. Anyway, guys, as I mentioned, 
follow me if you haven't that big big way um 8 p.m tomorrow night 1900 hours two hours 45 minutes ago tomorrow night see you then bye bye